What's up, Crossbuster Barbell? It is officially May 1st, 2020. Welcome. Let's go over our May birthdays before we get into our workout. So we have a lot of May birthdays. Uh, if I don't have you up here, it's because I don't have your birthday accurate in Zen Planner. So just let me know. But anyways, what I have is Kim, Tori, Steve, Rachel, Louisa, Matt, KT, Amanda, Lauren, Ryan, Serena, Kathy, Katie, Andre, the other Lauren, Will, and Alejandro. Happy birthday to you. It is your birthday month. Um, looking forward to some sunshine and some exercise with you shortly. So your strength for Friday is going to be our bench press. We're going to go with the eight by four. We're not going to be on a clock. Uh, same thing as last week. Last week we were 10 by three. This week we're eight by four. We're going to go up a little bit heavier. Uh, we're going to go 75%. I think last week, I don't think that the 65% was, was crazy difficult. Uh, hopefully that this is going to be a manageable jump for you. We're going to be doing a little bit less, uh, but a little bit more with the reps. We're going to go paused. I'm looking for a complete motionless stop of the bar. It doesn't have to be as prominent as last week. Last week I was looking for a three second pause. This week, let's go with a complete stop of any movement, then roll from there. Okay, so that might be like a one 1,000, go. We're working at about 75%. Now, if you don't have the weight to do the 75% and you're actually using a weight that's much less, let's go ahead and just bump our rep range up to like eight to 12 for each round. Um, that could be if you're doing dumbbells, that could be if you just don't have the bumpers to go heavy enough or the steel, that's fine too. Uh, we could easily make this a floor press or a dumbbell floor press, uh, whatever's best for you, that's fine. Um, but we're gonna go with eight by four or eight by a little bit more if we're doing lighter weight. B, we have super set, five rounds. We're gonna go Turkish get-ups on the left, Turkish get-ups on the right, and then we're going to follow that with some handstand holds. So let's talk about your Turkish get-ups first. Uh, T-G-U, sometimes you'll see it abbreviated, Turkish get-ups. What these are going to be, we're gonna start lying down on our back. We're going to, uh, whichever arm we're using, let's say we're using our right arm. With our right arm extended overhead, that's our starting position laying on our back, we're going to pull that right heel to our butt. That's going to be our starting position and then we're going to go ahead and uh, raise that weight up to the ceiling. We're gonna continue uh, sitting up we're gonna get that left arm straight and then we're going to pull that leg, uh, that, uh, that left leg through. We can go ahead and stand from there. Once we're standing with that weight overhead, we're gonna go ahead and just reverse the movement. Now, the big trick that you can uh, keep with a Turkish get up is keeping your center of gravity underneath of that weight. Now, if you have a little bit of shoulder weakness, you are definitely going to see this immediately with instability. Um, also a little trick is watch the weight. So if I have the weight of my right arm, if I go ahead and stare at that weight, I'm going to be better off knowing where it is in space. So proprioception, your sight plays a big role in that. If you don't believe me, go ahead and close your eyes and walk around. You'll know exactly what it feels like. Now that's going to be your Turkish get up for your handstand hold. If you can freestand it, awesome. Go ahead and accumulate your 60 seconds if you can't do it in one straight shot. If you are having trouble or your confidence isn't there to kick up in space, uh, just go ahead and find a wall. If you are not comfortable going back to wall, which is our normal handstand push-up position, we're just going to go belly to wall and we can kind of do like a wall walk and get our belly up to the wall. Uh, and you could even go not belly all the way to the wall and you could go out at like a 45 degree angle. That would probably be doable for most people. Also with your handstand, what you could very easily do is just go ahead and grab dumbbells or a barbell and we're just gonna hold them overhead. Both arms straight, covering your ears, arms extended, shoulder uh, overhead. And that would be an easy way for us to scale that as well. Now, your body weight workout is a very familiar workout that most of you have gone through and is awesome. It's called GI Jane. So GI Jane is just gonna be 100 burpee pull-ups. Um, we haven't gotten much uh, in the pull-up range this week at all, so that should be awesome for you guys. The um, burpees are going to be however you want to complete them as far as the stepping with the feet. So you can step back, step forward. If you know what I'm talking about, awesome. If you don't understand what I just said, it's doesn't even matter. So all I need you to do for your burpees are get your chest to the floor. So chest to the floor, touch the floor, and then you're gonna get up, grab your pull-up bar, and then just do a pull-up. Now, 
we can scale these. Most people are probably gonna do a kipping pull-up if they have access to a pull-up bar. If you don't have access to a pull-up bar, um, what we could do are a couple things. We could go with a, we could go with simply just 100 bar facing burpees, including the jump over the bar. That might be fine. We could go with a rower facing burpee where you jump over your rower. That might be fine. If you have a box, you could do box facing burpees uh, where you do a burpee and then jump on your box. You could do a uh, burpee box jump over. There's lots of different ways we could play around with this. If you're doing 100 burpee something, you're probably going to be in good shape. Um, jumping pull-ups, okay, that's the burpee pull-up is not the same as a burpee jumping pull-up. So a jumping pull-up is when you um, jump to the pull-up bar as your hands make contact with the bar, your body is actually just continually moving upward, okay? So if you are jumping to the pull-up bar and you grab the bar and immediately pull straight up, you are not doing a pull-up, you are doing a jumping pull-up. So you are using your momentum from the floor and your jump to get up. What we wanna do is actually um, jump up and either from a dead hang or from no momentum or jumping into a kip is fine. Um, we just don't want to use, uh, for RX, we don't want to use the jump to assist the pull-up. Your equipment workout, what we're looking for is going to be a 10-minute AMRAP twice. So this week, this is going to be the final part of our uh, machine calorie experiment, we'll call it. Um, we went with uh, one-minute rounds, then we went with two-minute rounds, and then four-minute rounds, and then Friday, we have a 10-minute round. Now, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday is gonna be exactly the same volume of rowing. The time on, or whatever machine, the time on your machine is gonna be exactly the same. I'm curious to see how this, this kind of shakes out. I kind of have an idea of what I'm expecting, uh, but you're gonna go 10 minutes on your machine, 10 minute rest, 10 minutes on the machine, done. So this might even be the shortest uh, overall of the four, just because the 10 minute rest after your second one is just, you know, you're done, so it doesn't matter. Um, so that might be the shortest one of the four, but I'm curious to see the time on the machine is actually gonna be the same. So I'm curious to see how that shakes out. That is your Friday, May 1st, 2020. Let's get this month started off right, get to work, and I will see you Saturday.